And can I can show one last example? Does that work? Will it come back? Not come back to life anymore. That's okay. And uh, what I've uh, because I also said something about um, our heel picks. So what you can do is, by the way, if you are at the URL here also. This notebook does not necessarily, you don't have to run it. You can take this URL away and you add and up in the file system. So in this file system, there's at first this more grids. So I just do here, open link in new tab. And the good thing is it still uses the same memory. So that's now actually, I don't have to wait until it restarts, but it's actually using the same. And another thing I would suggest is, there's now a chat question. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Nick. Um, <laughs> I, I'll just answer here directly. Uh, I'll, I'll hope so that I can make this all nicely available. Yeah, that would also be in my interest. Thanks, thanks for joining. Yeah, we have uh, from 10 to 1. Oh, we still have officially this. Uh, we are still in time. That's all good. Um, so this file here, what I want to show. So this file here, h 3 egg csv which you can also directly download here in the, in the overall Docker uh, uh, GitHub. H3. So a um, colleague of mine, Ivan, who has also helped with the presentation, has um that's pretty big file though has um aggregated some of this data is for estonia so we have elevation temperature precipitation i showed that before and it's based here is the h3 ids only there's no other information so if you go to kepler gl here kepler gl you say get started then you end up in this demo. And here you can upload CSV. You can, of course, also do up other stuff. But let me then just browse. So here, this h 3 egg CSV file. Let's upload this one. So and let's have a let's have a let's have a look what, what we see here. So this is the file here, right? Cell ID and then those variables. So here's a layer now, and um, here we open. It's it's not always immediately intuitive, but we can say here what type of layer it is. Is it is we can make it an H3 layer, or some 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 other like hexbin. But I would I would let's go with H3 because it's H3. And then um, the hex ID is obviously our cell ID column, right? And color, color is here which value we want to show. So this is elevation, okay? But we could also say temperature or precipitation. And then the color scale, quantize or quantile. Let's do quantile. So as you can see, by the way, so this is here over Estonia, right? So and the data is immediately put on on the on the area here so i can take this layer make it invisible here's estonia and um make it visible again uh, we can take a different color scale so let's say we want to have this elevation color scheme what well, looks a bit like an elevation color scheme And the color, we color we make elevation. So now I would actually want to inverse, reversed. Yeah, so here, this is the so-called northern uplands. As you can see, elevation is over 100 meters. <laughs> and then we have sort of the central area, and then we have the, the southern uplands, and they are getting really high actually here you get almost 200 meters 
And here we reach also Estonian's highest peak somewhere, which is the Egg Mountain, which is almost 300 meter. So, so this is uh, so much for that. So as you can see, so those those type of of uh, coordinate systems, basically coordinate reference or data, spatial data reference systems, are being uh, slowly adopted. So H3 is now is just super popular because it's Uber, but also because the library is actually already pretty useful with the things you can do. So, and then um, this other thing here are heel picks. So this is, um, as I said, mostly developed by Landcare Research. And here's Robert Gibb. And uh, it's also one of those partakers in the OGC standardization efforts. It's a purely Python library. I've been dabbling around a little bit in maybe making it also like a C or, or a technical library. And I just wanted to quickly show um, the, a little bit of the API here of, of our here picks. So you import our here picks DGGS and similar with DGG grid, it's actually not a fixed coordinate spatial reference system immediately when you start using it, because you can also change some of the parameters. For example, um, you know, some of the things like ellipsoid, uh, the orientation, orientation, some of those things. And um, so some of those things you would uh, construct for yourself. Whereas in H3, as we mentioned before, all these information things that are used to calculate the original reference frame, they are already given, they are already predefined. So here again, I do this crossing thing just for plotting. So in here we're creating some, some different um, geometries just to, to create this, um, this uh, nice, nice plot thing here, just so you can see um, how to build uh, those globes again. So an interesting bit here is now that we plot parents and children against each other. So I'm just doing again the example on of H3. Yeah, and this, those hex one and hex two, as you have, have you saw before, I created those um, at different resolutions. Um, so do it, do it, do it. So here you can see you know, all these cool pictures. You can do them yourself really quickly. And now you also know how to load some data, for example, into H3, you know, sampling of vector or raster data. And then you would end up you know, in, 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 a, in a thing like you can have the parents are blue and the children is just the next resolution layer on the, on the higher resolution in, in, in gray. So now we have our heel pics. So there's a couple of things. Um, the way our heel picks works is you have these um, these cell IDs and these cell IDs um, they are part strings and part numbers. So that, that's why this uh, building it up is a bit more complicated. So, but here again, we we I, I choose this ellipsoid, and then we need um, some additional information, and then we can I think we don't don't even yeah, then we create the cells. And here you can also um, say RDGGS uh, cells from region, and you have to give it sort of the extent, north, eastern, western, northern, southern. And, um, and then you get the geometry. You have to make cell, cell ID to geometry. So here you get the cells out. This is like, it's like this uh, hex IDs. And then these cells, um, you basically make the cell, each for these cells is like an object. And then you say boundary, and then you get a shapely polygon, right? As it's, uh, it's a bit more common. It's, as I said, the, 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 the library itself is right now, it's a bit more researchy in order to explore uh, the, the possibilities of that coordinate reference system.
So, and then I also just filter those three cells out and then let's see how this looks like. The idea is in the end, if you want to play this whole through by yourself, you make a, a nice grid. You can build something like this I did for, for a journal article um, to compare those. Yeah, so this is, even though it's more interesting for plotting. So here, so here we have now real picks. And you can again see you have a Percher 9 for the squares. And you have uh, some so-called dart cells. Um, and here, uh, here is a circle. Um, and I think this is even the equator. So some of the ideas are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five. No, the equator is rather here. So because the idea is that they have ISO latitude, that this is uh, some of those rings are at um, fixed latitudes, which for for construction reasons. Yeah, but I think so that the library also you have things like cells from region. You can also ask what the neighbors of my cells are. Um, but this library is not as fast as as H three, for example. Some Things uh, took a bit longer, but I think, yeah, I think there's nothing to to be you know critical about. Okay, I think that that was that. So you have seen all these things you can do with DGS at the current day. You can load data, you can analyze data uh, with the commercial software. You can do even more sophisticated things. There are not so many different commercial softwares right now, so or professional software, so. Most geospatial right now uses um, Google S2 or Uber H3 under the hood, and then some some engineers build the, the the spatial data processing pipelines in the cloud. It's not so much of a user thing right now, but this is something I would really want to discuss in the discussion panel. So, and 